Welcome to a sultry Alabama summer afternoon. I've done a couple of videos on gravity-fed fountains, those guys over there. Uh, videos are up here. This video is going to be what I learned about water sensors, three different sensors, uh, water flow, water pressure, and water moisture. I also learned that those little tiny brown sugar ants, uh, also called odorous house ants, love raspberry pie. Uh, but first things first, why would I want to monitor, monitor uh, water in this creek? Well, the flow of this creek varies dramatically depending on whether it's rained recently or not in the summer. Uh, it, when it rains, it turns into a tumult. Tumult the word? I think so. It's a lot of water. Uh, versus if we haven't had rain for a week or two, it dries up quite a bit. Like right now, there's not much water flow. Uh, so the challenge is to adjust the flow in these fountains so that then there's plenty of water in the creek, all four fountains are going full blast, and when there's not much water, like right now, uh, we taper it down so just the amount of water we can get through without the hoses going dry. The first of those two sensors, the flow and pressure, I didn't have as much luck with in a creek environment, and the reason is well, let me show you those sensors first. So the flow sensor is that guy right there. He's just a simple propeller that has a magnet attached to him and a Hall Effect trend, uh, sensor next to it that then gets uh, the pulses get counted by the Raspberry Pi. The pressure sensor is this guy right here. Uh, so he hooks up to just the regular hose and no flow involved, it just senses the pressure via a resistive sensor um, that's also measured by the Raspberry Pi. I, I have showed these before. These are the ball valves that the Raspberry Pi controls. And the Pi is up here. This is where our sugar ants come in. See all that white dust next, uh, scattered around the box, is Demetrius Earth. And I've discovered, let me see a few of the ants right over there, that this Demetrius Earth, which is actually a food additive, so very safe to everybody but small little creatures like those ants, cuts the ants so they don't like it. They stay away. Before I discovered that, I had ants all over this box. They made themselves a little home there, and then you can see the little eggs that the queen was laying. Uh, they may have liked the warmth of that uh, power wart. Something about this dry, dark, warm environment they liked. So the Pi is underneath this 8 relay board down there. Uh, he counts up those uh, pulses from the flow meter and the resistance from the pressure meter and tallies it all back up to the house for house entertainment and enjoyment. The problem with those is that when this creek flows, the water that goes through it is not very clean. It's muddy and the little pieces of dirt get stuck in those propeller wheels of the flow sensor and something i've read the online reviews for that pressure sensor and apparently it's not reliable for maybe other reasons other than dirty water but i've gone through a couple of them and they just quit working after a week or so so time for option three what i do is what i'm doing now is i'm measuring the depth of the water in my water pond up here. So let's go show you that. So I've changed this a little since the previous video. I switched to a big four inch PVC pipe, a simple grate over it, and then the water just flows by gravity down to this little pond that I built. And then a finer filter is used there and the siphon uh, water pressure pulls it up and goes down to the fountains via that PVC pipe. So the magic here is in this wireless moisture sensor here. It's from a company I've mentioned before. You can find them at wirelesstag.net. Uh, it's an ultra low power sensor that lasts for a year or so on a button battery and it measures the resistance between those two little electrodes at the bottom. As the water level drops, the resistance 
uh, increases until if it's out in the air then the uh, resistance is at a maximum. You can program it to send an HTTP request at any or a multitude of water levels and then have your house react accordingly. For example, I'm going to turn on a couple of the fountains and that'll increase the outgoing rate. We should see it turn those fountains back off. So I'm going to ask the house with my phone here, turn creek fountains on. That should turn all three creek fountains, fountains on. Set to on which will uh, increase the rate of flow going out of that siphon. We'll come back here in a minute as the water decreases. You should hear the house tell the phone. The house will start turning off valves accordingly. Creek is too dry. Creek level low. Valve one set to off. Creek level wet. So it has a wet stage when they're just barely got water on it, and then just a little bit further, it'll return to normal stage. Creek, Creek level normal. Return to normal humidity. And so there we have it. We've reached equilibrium. The uh, water going out, but same as the water going back in. So the range on this guy is pretty impressive. He goes from here all the way up the hill over there. <laughs> this is the box I've shown before. It has a variety of things in it. The uh, HDTV home run a receiver that connects up to the antenna up the hill there. Power over Ethernet hub for the various trail cameras. And then this guy is the wireless tag.net receiver. So from here to way down there, it's a pretty impressive range. There is one other sensor that I have used extensively but haven't talked about. That's a temperature sensor. Now, Measuring the temperature of the creek is of little value. At least I haven't figured out an excuse to put one in there yet. <laughs> but putting a temperature sensor in the hot tub, that's useful. So, uh, but let's save that for another day. Maybe I'll do a video from the hot tub to show you some of the tricks that I'm using there. So until then, thanks for watching. Camera for saw person.